In this lesson we're going to take a look at the process of long division. And really long division is a method you're going to have to use for dividing numbers anytime the dividend is not a special product with the divisor. So what I mean is if the dividend is 72 and the divisor is 8, you should know that 72 divided by 8 is 9 because 8 times 9 equals 72 is a special product. But anytime we're outside of that situation, we're going to have to use this process of long division. So let's take a look at 144 divided by 9. I'm going to show you the process of long division, and then I'll give a little story problem that hopefully helps to explain the process a little bit, and then we will work on that process some more. So first of all, we're going to make the box notation that we've seen previously. And the dividend always has to go in the box, and the divisor always has to go outside the box. And so our first goal is to try to put 9 into the least number of digits possible. So what I mean by that is first we'll check 9 and 1, and we'll ask, does 9 fit into 1? And of course the answer is no, uh, because 9 is larger than 1, so it can't fit in. So now we try the first two digits together. So we'll ask, does 9 go into 14? And the answer to that is, yes, it does go into 14. Now it only goes in one time. So we're going to put a 1 above the 4 and 14. It doesn't go in twice because 2 times 9 would be 18. That would be too large. So 9 only fits into 14 once. We then take the product of 1 and 9, which of course is 9, and place it underneath of 14, the number we just put 9 into. We then create a little subtraction problem and take 9 away from 14 and get a remainder of 5. And then we drop down the 4 in 144. We drop down that next digit. We then put 9 into 54, and 9 fits into 54, hopefully you recognize 6 times, because 6 times 9 equals 54 is a special product. So we actually multiply those, put the product underneath, and subtract. Now the remainder is 0, there are no more digits to drop down, so that tells me that the answer to 144 divided by 9 is 16. So just to recap this process, 9 would not go into 1, so then I considered the first two digits, 9 went into 14, just one time. I took that product of 1 and 9, placed it under 14, and took the difference. That left me with 5 left over. I dropped that 4 down and tried to put 9 into 54, and it went in exactly 6 times. 6 times 9 is 54. We subtracted and got a remainder of 0. Now to kind of understand this process, um, let's consider the following situation. Um, suppose that my neighbor needs some work done in his yard, and he, and it's a, quite a bit of work, so he offers $144 to get the job done. Now I, I accept and, and, and tell him I'll do it, uh, but I don't have a lot of time on my hands, so I get a bunch of friends to help. And so suppose that there are a total of, of nine of us working on this project. Now, my neighbor is still going to give $144, whether I do it all myself or if I share the workload. And so since there's nine of us, we want to know how much money does each person get. So this process here of trying to put nine into 14... Notice the 14 ends in the tens place. So that's kind of like us asking, well, how many $10 bills could each person get? What's the most number of $10 bills that each person could get? Well, if there's $144 and there's nine of us, we could only give out one $10 bill to each person. Right? If we try to give out two, that'd be too much because that'd be two tens is 20 and then times that by 9, that's 180. So that's above the total amount of money. So we could only give each person 110. 
when I multiplied 1 and 9 and put it under the 14 and subtracted, what I'm really kind of doing is I'm saying, all right, this 9 kind of represents the 9 ten dollar bills, or in other words, $90. So this process of subtracting and then dropping down the 4 is kind of like me saying, okay, we've given out a total of $90. How much money is left over to still divide up? Well, there were still $54 left to divide up. And so then we asked, okay, of the remaining $54, how do we divide that up amongst nine people? Well, nine goes into 54 six times, so each person gets six $1 bills. And so this answer of 16 means that each person gets $16. So hopefully that story problem that we've made fit with these numbers kind of helps you understand uh, what it is that we're doing in this long division process. Um, let's take another look here at, at this example, 23,867 divided by 6. So again, the dividend, which in this case is the top number, needs to be on the inside of our partial box, and the 6 should be on the outside. So we try to put 6 into the least number of digits possible. 6 can't go into 2, so we say 6 goes into 23 just 3 times. 6 times 4 would be slightly too large. It would be 24. So 3 times 6 is 18. We put the 18 below the 23. We subtract and get 5. And then we drop down the next digit. So it's very important. You never try to put the divisor into the remainder before the next digit is dropped. So always drop first, then put 6 into there. Now 6 goes into 58. You should be thinking about your multiplication facts. 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 9 is 54. Any bigger than that, 6 times 10 would be 60. That's, that's way too big. So definitely got to be a 9 here. And um, incidentally, if you ever get a Double digit number is your answer uh, for how many times your divisor goes into this. You've done something wrong because it should only be a single digit number. So 9 times 6 is 54. Get a remainder of 4. Drop down the 6. 6 goes into 46. Well, 6 times 8 is 48. That's a little too large. So 6 times 7 is 42. We subtract and get a remainder of 4. Then I can drop my 7 down. 6 goes into 47. Again, 7 times. 6 times 7 is 42, giving you a remainder of 5, but now there are no more digits to drop. And my remainder is not 0 like it was in the last one. So what we end up with here is an answer of 6 goes into 23,867 3,977 times with a remainder of 5. Or in other words, you can put 6 into that number, 23,867, uh, 3,977 times, but then there will still be a 5 left over.